Um, the microphone seems to work. Um, the presentation is in English, as announced. Um, and I will just shortly introduce um, myself, Oliver Sheehan, from the University Library Basel. I am um, the responsible developer for the project uh, Swiss Beat Basel Bern. And um, to my right is Adrian Christen from uh, Snowflake um, Productions. Um, what can I tell you today is um, I will give you a short overview of the, the, the project, its history and its um, context. I will focus on the, on the, on the choice and the implementation of um, the open source uh, software viewfind for our presentation uh, component as an OPAC replacement and search engine and um, give a short overview on the infrastructure and um, the build up of our development uh, teams locally as well as um, with our partner. Um, then to give some experiences um, in development of, of an open source uh, tool like this. And in the end, um, I am happy to show some, some results of what we have done in the last half year uh, to show some, some um, things we've done with the new catalog, um, SwissBIP Basel Bern and SwissBIP. And there might be some time for discussion and questions in the end. Um, okay, um, as you, most of you will, will know the, the National Catalog SwissBIP, uh, green, uh, green interface, has been online since 2009, I think, and um, is based on the, on the software um, Touchpoint from the vendor OCLC. And a SwissBIP local view Basel Bern has been productive since the end of 2012. Looks at the start page just the same in orange. And um, has um, A two column view with um, books and more and in the first tab, local uh, solar index behind it, and an extended um, article aggregated article index WorldCat local and this has been live, not very much um, like uh, um, not many not too many people use it because it is not um, yeah very popular. Um, because we still have the old OPAC. But um, we started a project of a, a local view based on, on SwissBIP in 2011, and we've been, uh, we've been productive. And pretty early in the project, it was evident that um, Touchpoint as a presentation component was for us at the end of the line. Um, there's two reasons the commercial developer or the commercial vendor developed it into a different direction and um, development costs for mainly OPAC functionalities like um, um, orders or requests and uh, account <coughs> functionality would have been excessive. So um, we, needed, we needed a replacement. Uh, this was clear when we went public. This is a reason why the public installation at the moment is not very popular because everybody knows a year later the whole thing will change again. Um, then, well, we needed a replacement for our presentation component and um, what choices did we have? Uh, it had to fit into the Swiss BIP ecosystem or architecture, I can call it, means it has to be an independent component um, that can work with the different layers, with the existing solar search engine that we have, with the metadata that comes from, a, a bit from our 
bibliographic uh, database. And um, open source, as such, was not was not a, a condition, but um, there are not, as most of you will know, not too many options. And um, viewfind was an obvious first choice. There, we could have gone for blacklight. Some might know. Um, or we could have developed something with a, with a content management system. Um, but we chose Viewfind, and for several reasons. Um, Viewfind in version 2.0 was in alpha development stage, so we were like an early adopter and, and could jump on a, early on a running train. And in Viewfind, there were many, or there are many um, drivers for integrated library systems. Um, that we could use, or hopefully we could use them and adapt and extend. There are um, integrated APIs to aggregated indices, um, well, article indexes, um, like, yeah, Summon, WorldCat, or EBSCO. Some installations use Primo Central. Um, it is based on a Solar Index. We already have a Solar Index under our um, touchpoint installation. And um, it, has a, it is open source, and it has a relatively large community, many in Germany. Um, it is based in the US, of course. So it is, a, it is a worldwide community. And well, we have no license fees with it and no restrictions at all how we use it and what we're going to do with it. So we had um, two objectives in, in the implementation of UFind. Basically, um, well, implement it and um, implement the, the, the existing SwissBib layout and already existing functionality that we had in Touchpoint um, and add OPAC functionality to it. So users should not like ha have a, a huge change to a new design or something. Small things are different, of course, but there should not be a break in design, but users should have more of it. They should have their account. They should be able to do reservations and, and stuff. So um, the first uh, decision to choose our own layout, our own theme, was a step away from a Viewfind Classic. Um, some of you might know this is how Viewfind looks out of the box, so-called uh, blueprint theme. Uh, ours looks pretty different, just, just uh, very much like this. Um, and we had our own independent uh, solar index that is not based on the solar structure of Viewfind. Uh, this also caused uh, some, some extensions. So um, we had to extend Viewfind to fit it into our infrastructure, and we had to develop modules that did not yet exist in Viewfind. And um, like, for instance, um, the ability to set um, institutions as favorites uh, in your personal account, and if you have them as favorite, um, hits will be boosted, and you can access them through a top facet, something very, um, very good in a, in, a, in a catalog with 200 or even 900 um, libraries, as is the case with uh, SwissBib. Um, so we had all this, and what uh, like we had all, we had to do all these things: extend modules, do new modules. We needed um, development resources, and we were all like, we are all in a in a daily business, and we have all um, components that have to work every day. So we had somehow, um, yeah, to find um, application developers that could help us. I just wrote down what, what was needed in a, in a descending order, like somebody must have an understanding of PHP, 
um, must have an understanding of Zend framework or of other PHP frameworks um, and be able to, to learn a new one, um, have some understanding of solo and of, of search in general. Then perfect would be if persons had library knowledge um, and then yeah, project experience. So this is like what we were looking for. Um, so this is like the, the personal side of it. And we, um, we were looking for developers, um, several paths, and then in the end decided to work with, uh, with um, Snowflake, where Adrian is from. Um, he can tell you more about it, but uh, um, uh, Snowflake is specialized in, in open source production. Um, most of the things you do is typo dry and extending into, into other um, open source development projects. So we didn't hire someone, we worked with a, an external partner. And the next um, thing we had to do was um, setting up an infrastructure. Um, so developers um, set up their local installations. So we developed just, uh, locally. Um, and we are like, how many people do develop? Like five or six. Um, some develop on uh, Ubuntu, others on Zend OS. Um, you do work on Windows. <laughs> Someone works on Mac. Um, so we have, we have um, everything and yeah, it's just basically uh, installations on, on, on a LAMP um, environment and yeah, it works fine most of the time. And um, those that had not a huge um, experience in software development like, like my, me, Myself, I had to get accustomed to, a, to an IDE, an integrated development um, engine type of software to help you developing. Um, then, like for coding and, and debugging, and um, we had to find a place for our source code, and an obvious choice was um, the source repository GitHub. I can show you... Um, How uh, this looks, this is, um, so this is kind of, okay. The, the source code of our project is on um, github.org uh, or com, github.com, mm -hmm. um, SwissBib, where we have um, several repositories with um, SwissBib components. Um, there was a talk in the morning of SwissBib Mobile, uh, it's on this, um, in this organization too. SPVF2 is the source code of our um, viewfind implementation. There is a search conf where we have the configurations for our um, search engines, Solar. The content collector is um, something to, to collect the content of all um, Swiss library networks, um, like through uh, publishing Content to search docs is our engine to transform mark records into index, index uh, structures and SRU server is obvious. Libadmin, I can tell maybe uh, later or something about it, is a tool to, um, to administer um, libraries, library codes, addresses, um, groups and views uh, or groups and um, in in our um, presentation component. We uh, administer with it the like 900 libraries that are in SwissBib. So our source code is on, Swiss, uh, is on, on GitHub and we share the code through GitHub, can annotate it. We use um, the integrated issue manager. Um, you can do like branching, testing, um, pulling back, trying something out is, 
if you get used to it, you get used to it quickly. It's a very good tool, and you can even point others to your code um, if, they do, if they are not in your team. It's just on a website. Very convenient. Um, we are a fork of um, the repository of GitHub of Viewfind itself. Viewfind 2.0 uh, is on GitHub 2. So um, we see what they do like every day. Like all, all the development code or all the productive code is on Viewfind except one file where some passwords are stored for external content. <laughs> That's all. Um, so infrastructure, then yeah, we had to like set up development server um, so that everybody develops locally, but a place where, where you can share your work. Um, so in detail, we had to install LAMPs. Um, we work with PHP Storm. We do X debug is for debugging. Uh, Jenkins is a tool we should use more. It's like to do um, code testing automatically. We use Git and we use Git flow to, to manage the workflows in our development. Okay. Time is... If I, yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> well, that's, Okay. 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 Um, short overview: the team um, we have, I call it a local team, um, the Swiss Bib team. I am talking about Swiss Bib Basel Bern, like the the orange view, the local view. But the whole thing we're doing, changing to viewfind, is just in parallel with Swiss Bib Point CH, the green national engine. So we are an integrated team locally in Basel. Um, this is from, from Swissbib, is uh, Günther is over there, and um, Tobias Fiegener, who is on a well-earned holiday. Um, myself, some other people in the library, in the IT department that do um, support sometimes. Um, then, we have uh, a working group in the library network that is um, very much supported by, by Chantal, who is over there, like a group of, of librarians that, that um, look at the work, um, um, try to, to find consensus and, and do testing. So this is like, I call it the, the local team. And then we have uh, our development partner. Um, we work closely together, um, that is Snowflake. Um, is Adriana's um, team, team, um, team leader. And in the beginning, we had two developers. At the moment, we have one. Um, so um, in the, and when we started working with um, Snowflake, we adapted a, a project. Um, um, Structure, Scrum, project um, methodology, methodology. Me uh, Scrum, where we do like, as, as um, often quoted, agile development. We do develop in very short cycles. Um, so, I represent the local, um, the local team in that in that uh, work as as project owner. Adrian works as Scrum master, and the developers work in very um, quick cycles so that we can put out new work like every second week or so. Okay. Um, how did that work and how does it um, still work? Um, as said in this in this um, like in this methodology, we do work in so-called sprints that run like every two weeks. Um, on my part and on the part of the local team, there is a lot of preparation um, for this for the sprints and a lot of need to to explain. We have to set priorities. 
what do we need first? We have uh, to explain um, to the development partners the, the, the big picture, what is it all about, um, can be very complicating and, and endless, so like try to find the focus. And um, we have to explain the tasks, what is to do in the next few days and in the next weeks. And um, we have to help out and explain um, nifty details. Um, how does the API work? What is um, mark subfield? These things. Um, then we have to get used to a certain development velocity. Um, it is a very intensive work. Um, developers, the, the developers we had, um, is, as soon as they are well guided or get the things explained more or less correctly, they work pretty fast and you have to, to keep pace. And um, this means also you have to, to control what they are doing because they work fast and they can very fast go into a wrong direction. So you have to monitor closely and monitor closely means on a very much on a coding level too. So you have, you have to follow because the other thing about open source software is not just license free, but it means you, you can keep things in your hand. And um, it is necessary to understand what you're doing. And um, what we are doing here is we develop, we do a change, but one day the developers will be gone and it doesn't help a lot if all the knowledge is gone with them too. Um, so we have to, we have to keep um, the knowledge uh, locally so that, that we, we can um, keep things running, do changes and um, do development ourselves. So I did like time saver as a question mark. It's, it's an open question, but it's not a, it is of course a time saver because we have more hands, but it is also um, a lot of work to work in, in, in a way like this. It is not writing um, a 10 page manual, what do they have to do? And three months later or half a year later, you get some solution that works or does not work. It is integrating teams and communicating very closely. Um, and yeah, this is like my, my side of the story from the local team and Adrian, um, can tell you something about experiences from the, from the partner side. Thank you, Oliver. <laughs> well, yes, from our side, partner side. Snowflake is a, historically a an, uh, web application company and uh, we never have heard about uh, Mark. Well, Mark, yes, but Mark is a friend of mine <laughs> and not an XML file. We haven't heard about LF or ILS, so what the heck is this all? So first of all, we had, starting when we started our cooperation, we had to find our glossar. We have to find out what is LF, what, what are the needs, so that the wording uh, fits. So it, yes, understanding clients glossar and the requests that business logic was at the beginning, first uh, issue. And uh, then, as we started, we have, have seen a lot of interfaces. You find uh, OPAC, we have heard and uh, never known uh, before. Uh, there were uh, lots of interfaces and it, it looks like more or less like a jungle at the beginning. beginning. And we uh, have to understand, we have we had to um, uh, we have to make some research to try out to ask as an example Günther um, what is within this XML response which field do we have to display Oliver helped us on the solar side um, where can we find out can we uh, find the information 
And uh, then we had uh, the possibility to, to uh, develop the, the presentation layer. So it was also kind of try and error, but uh, without an open communication between us, uh, it wouldn't be possible from our side to, to make this project because the knowledge of the business logic we didn't have. Um, so it was a real cooperation. And uh, yes, the focus was on a good and open communication. Then, for sure, there were several people. So you have heard about Swiss Pip Green, Swiss Pip Orange, different needs. Um, then we have UFIND, an open source project where we have uh, also uh, sent some pull requests on the GitHub stack. So uh, also there was a small cooperation giving back something to Viewfind, to Damien Katz. Um, so many people around the project to communicate with and also to discuss, discuss some good solutions for problems found on our way. And finally, sure, we had the possibility to implement the logic. I think if Oliver had us given a, um, a concept at the beginning of the project, the result wouldn't be that what you <laughs> would like or what you can use. So it was necessary, as he explained, that we uh, worked in small steps in so-called sprints, which is uh, an artifact of, or a method from Scrum that we met us all two weeks and uh, presented what we have done and he presented us what he will that we do the next two weeks. Yes, so we started implementing the logic for login, borrowing, ordering, generating an overview over the fees and so on within Zend Framework 2, you find and all these components, jQuery and so on, this wasn't always easy, but <laughs> mostly um, successful. <laughs> Some bugs, uh, yeah, will happen, as always. Um, some fixes were needed, but I think at the final end, we had a good solution so far. The su success so far from my side was possible through this cooperation, this partnership, and this mutual interest and this agile development. In another way, I can't imagine that it would be successful, but maybe <laughs> there are luckier than uh, us. Okay. Um, then. Um, we probably, hopefully, will be going public at the beginning of 2014. There is um, testing going on at the moment and many things, many mistakes will be found and we'll be working hard the next two months. But we, um, yeah, as I said, we will be going public um, in two or three months. And I can show some features of the solution that we, that we developed. And um, if you have any questions, you can ask them now. Or if you want to see something specific, um, I can try to show it. Otherwise, I can just give, some, give an overview. Are there just any questions at the, at the moment? Yeah. How many documents have to, to go on uh, this new system? To be indexed? Um, well, Swiss BIP, uh, the national Swiss BIP has 
something like 21 million documents. And in the orange version, we have 7 million. Yeah. This is um, the exact number if you do an empty search. Yeah, it's the exact number. This, in this basel baron index, there are, um, these are the, the holdings, the records of academic libraries in Basel and in Bern, including the National Library, and including um, retro seals as a repository which had some 300,000 to it. And um, in the second tab, summons an external index that we do license um, is a bit more. But these are aggregated articles, it's not our content. How about the interlibrary loan with the system, this new system? Well, um, well inter, inter... Because you have many libraries. Yes, we are, the, the EDS Basel Baron as a union has a, has um, a system of, of sharing documents between its libraries and libraries that are not part of it um, as it is in Switzerland then they can work through interlibrary loan um, but it doesn't have to do directly with what we are doing here but you can request um, books through interlibrary loan mm -hmm. if you the question was uh, between uh, uh, the network yes in, in Swiss BIP, this would be, yeah, if, if interlibrary loan would be easier between networks, would be perfect, but it is not, not part of our solution. This is an administrative question for the networks. Do they want to integrate their, their loans? We are mainly concerned with search and interacting with the library systems to do account functionality and things like that. But it's not administrative in that sense. Okay. Yes? Uh, I was looking for technical documentation for SwissBig, um, for example, to link from third party system to SwissBig. I didn't find that at the beginning of the project, so you had this nice um, interface where you could ask questions, make uh, inputs, etc. So we got a, an answer there. I think and this kind of changed uh, over time. And there was no hint that it will change. And, uh, so, is there anywhere a technical documentation here? Let's go about um, To link to, well, there are several APIs to link to, like to the views or to, to data in itself. Some information you, you will get in the workshop uh, later on with Günther. But um, a clean and good documentation on how to access SwissBib is kind of um, falls between chairs because it's a lot of time. But I've seen you have the wiki, and then on the wiki page, um, lots of documentation is only from members. So. You can write an email and probably become a member. There's no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but, but not every documentation on the wiki is up to date too. It's yeah, always a bit. Stupid. But you will find lots more, a lot of um, more information if you are a member. True. Another topic from this story is <coughs> how you can, how you could be part of the development. I think this is a question for me that we can provide if our resources are enough. We could provide documentation, but for sure. Um, uh, documentation we, uh, we, we provide by now is not, is not enough, as, as you have said. But I guess, or I would say, or I would wish that we, that we could manage it to collaborate, then we could manage more as it is done by now. And uh, yes, <laughs> this is a working match. <laughs> What's the reason for this question, maybe? Well, uh, I actually do run a DLL managing system, which we'll uh, talk, talk later on. Mm -hmm. uh, we link to many, many resources, like uh, Swiss Bing, mm -hmm. 
old German systems, and so you need to know the Afrin. Mm -hmm. But what I do remark is that there is no tradition of of, um, of communicating changes in the RPs mm -hmm. in the library, but that's kind of strange. Mm -hmm. the API, sorry, the API of um, the SRU interface is, is, doc, is, is documented. Okay. And you can use it and it shouldn't have changed by now of the SRU interface. Well, what I had was I was sending a single ES central system. Mm -hmm. So the query parameter uh, now is query 20 and then once the ES sent it's also the normal. Mm -hmm. uh, send, us a, send, us an, send us an email and then you will get immediately what you want. <laughs> you always have to reverse engineer then how it works. Yes, I can. That's it. Just over it. Yes. Yes. And if I understood correctly, uh, there was a time when you were hesitating uh, hiring somebody in your team or uh, uh, going with an external partner like a, a small food company. Mm -hmm. And how was the choice made? What are the convenience uh, and disadvantages of a hire or working with a company? Who did you choose? Um, we we were trying to find someone. We had applications, and some good ones, but, but in the end, um, we decided not to hire someone also because um, it was part-time or, or only like um, limited period for a year, and it, was not so, it is not so easy to find a good uh, application developer that comes into a project like this and stays only for a year. And um, and then you have to explain many things anyway. So it was kind of if if the the perfect person would have applied, we might have gone a different way. It's no clear cut answer. So yeah, you can throw it short, short and short and short. Sorry, but, but, uh, but I think. What I like um, related to the collaboration with Snowflake is that, um, as we have heard by Oliver and Adrian, we have had, we have, um, we needed some time to come into the whole thing. And Snowflake has had to learn what what they should do. Could we have we have had to we have had to provide information, but but now after six or seven months. I think we managed it beside realizing the solution which is working. We are going we are going to we are going to public with this degree at the end of this month. And for me, with Snowflake as a regional company in Switzerland, it has a possibility for Swiss and for other institutions to work with them. And I think this is a this is a possibility. This is this is um, a value for the community that there is a company in Switzerland you can, you can go and you can ask and because they have, by now they have some experience because of the work of Swissbit, they are better um, uh, to, to give you um, work back you are, you are acquiring. For me it's a uh, Okay. Um, is time over anyway? No, you can go on in a few minutes, can I? We have a lunch break now. Yeah, I just um, might show some um, in Swiss Beat Battle Baron we do um, authentication via our Aleph system so this um, was implemented in the last months I can log in with my credentials on Swiss Beat. I do have now a, a favorite that is defined to my left, I do make the page a little bit smaller. 
What can I do with here? Uh, yeah. That is it's gross. Oops. So. Oh, wrong one. Here I am. Sorry. Okay. Um, so I do another search. And um, records that are um, in this library in Uni Basel UB Wirtschaft are boosted, shown with a heart symbol to the right. And in my personal account under uh, Favoriten, or oh, everything is in French too. I can add libraries to my to my favorite list. Like for instance, the Zentralbibliothek Bern. And when I do a search here, then I can um, yeah, filter to the holdings of this library very quickly. <coughs> so if I'm used to go to three or four libraries, these are my favorites. And I do have um, an account that is database uh, data from the Aleph system. Me document pronte. Not everything is translated, as you can see. Um, very slow. This is because data comes from Aleph. Um, my mes amendes, how much is it? Ah, <laughs> okay. Um, I used to have several hundreds of francs because it is the test system, so, but somehow they have gone mysteriously. And I can order um, here you have the so-called uh, groups, you have a group uh, favori, uh, a group uh, région. So libraries are um, ordered by regional groups, not based on the network anymore, but based on their region. We can do this independently. And um, I want to order that book. Ausleihen. I want to have it sent to Zurich and pay five francs. It's on the it's on the test system. Um, yeah, it's on the test system. <laughs> so. Okay, here it is um, ordered through our new OPAC. I can order the books, just the same functionality as in Aleph. This is the interlibrary loan of the EDS, as you might know. Okay, um, this was a, a quick overview. I think if there are any more questions, there's time or I'll, we'll be around. Thank you very much.